Joey Sparks. This is your reminder God's mercies are new again this morning. Newer is better, isn't it? New is better. Don't we prefer new to old? We, we know from life experience that's not always true. Even in inconsequential things, new is not always better. Better is better, right? Take, for instance, if you ever seen a, a struggling business restaurant or store of some sort and they advertise under new management new ownership they're trying to get us to believe that new is better but have you ever seen those quickly go out of business even though they were under new ownership yeah if the new owners are not better owners it doesn't guarantee anything i know of some some shoe companies and boot companies that i've kind of tried to keep up with through the years and they no longer hand make their boots or their shoes. They no longer make them in, say, Italy or the United States. Instead, they make them in a foreign country, in a factory. And the people who have been loyal customers of theirs say, sorry, but the new product is not better than the old. It's actually worse. Newer is not always better. Better is better. So when you get to chapter 8 of Hebrews, what we find is that the new covenant under Jesus Christ, is not better because it's new. It's better because it's better. Now, it happens to be new because when you have two covenants given at two different eras of time, one of them must be newer than the other. And so it is new. But one of the things that makes it better is that it was prophesied to come into place. It wasn't as if Jesus came on the scene and all of a sudden, without anyone ever having any clue what was happening, without any scriptural heads up, that he just says, oh, I'm coming with a new covenant. That's not what happened. That when God gave the old covenant, that before God gave the old covenant, he's always been leaving clues, pointing forward to a new covenant, an everlasting covenant. And so in Hebrews chapter 8, you find this reference to this new covenant that's a better covenant, and it was a covenant that was promised in the days of Jeremiah, the time when the children of Israel are in exile. There's coming a better covenant. And now Jesus is the one who has instilled that better covenant. And then we get to enjoy that better covenant today. What's he say about it? Hebrews chapter 8. So look at verse 6. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old, as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. We read about those in chapter 6, those better promises. So his service now today is more excellent than the service of the previous high priest. Why? Because he's operating out of a different covenant, a better covenant, a newer covenant. Verse 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. If the old covenant was 100% perfect, complete, and able to do everything God needed it to do, then they would have never promised the second one, he says. There would have been no reason, no occasion to look for the second. So verse 8, for he finds fault with them. He finds fault with the old covenant and its promises when he says this in Jeremiah 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant I made with their fathers. Did you hear it? When Jeremiah spoke those words, God spoke those words through the prophet Jeremiah. Immediately, it made the old covenant faultless or fault, faulty. It immediately rendered that old covenant obsolete. Now it continued in force. It continued all the way through the days of Jesus. But he immediately said, because there is a covenant coming in future days, this, this covenant's days are numbered. This covenant will not last forever. So as he closes chapter 8, he says, verse 13, and speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first obsolete. What is, ob what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. It's no longer the means by which we access God, and it's soon about to no longer have any impact whatsoever. Now, the, the reason this is better than the Old Covenant, one of the other reasons is verse 12, the last verse of that quote from Jeremiah 31, that would be verse 34 of that text. He says, For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. 
powerful, powerful concept because through the regular sacrifices of the Old Covenant, the people and God remembered the sin of the people over and over again because they keep having to make these sacrifices. This New Covenant provides a way for God to no longer have to access our sin any longer. That once Jesus' blood covers our sin, God does not choose to remember or to hold our sin against us. He gives us complete forgiveness. That's going to be something he dives into even more in depth in chapters 9, especially chapter 9, but 9 and 10. We thank you for your time. Uh, It's our prayer that God's timeless word will be your meditation all day today. Look at this moment.